Hey guys, how's it going? Mac here. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Today we're gonna be doing an oil change on the fat bob. Um, if you're one of those guys that does your own maintenance, uh, following the maintenance schedule that's in your uh, manual, then uh, all of the, the steps are in there, step-by-step -step style. I'm just gonna kind of break it down for you. It really doesn't take very long to do. This is one of the most uh, basic types of maintenance that you can do on your own bike. And uh, let's get started, check it out. All right, so before we dive in, let's go over a quick list of the things that we're gonna need to get the job done. We have an oil pan to catch and collect the dirty oil, some shop rags, a filter socket, a 3 8 inch drive ratchet and extension arm, a 5 8 spanner wrench, three quarts of oil, a filter, and drain plug O-rings. The table that I've got set up here is actually the Harley Davidson oil pan and uh, pretty much all the stuff you can get from your dealership minus uh, the tools. You, you can get that filter socket from the dealership. Forgot the funnel. Yeah, you're gonna need one of these. You're also gonna wanna make sure that your bike is fully warmed up, so go for a ride. So here is a look at where we're heading. We have the bike on the kickstand, the jiffy stand there, and looking to get at this drain plug that's located just below the transmission over here, the derby cover side. Next up, you wanna take your oil pan, make sure that you've got that plug removed so you're not just pouring oil all over it. <laughs> And then it's just a matter of getting it positioned correctly underneath the bike. You want to have it placed so that it's going to catch the oil that's draining from it. Uh, but as you move forward into the next couple of steps, you'll see that uh, it's handy to have a wide pan like this. It actually needs to catch oil from two different locations. So with the pan in place, you've got your spanner. Make sure you've got enough clearance to get that plug loosened up. And then once you've broken the seal on that, you should be able to get after it with your hands now. Uh, at this point in time, you have already warmed up the bike, so the oil's gonna be hot coming out of there. Uh, beware. So after this is drained for a little while, it'll start to slow down, and not long at all. Um, it'll start to slow down a bit, you'll see that, and you can position the drain pan a little bit more forward so you can go ahead and move on to the next section. You, you don't need to sit here and wait for it to drain completely before you go ahead and move on to the filter. So the first thing you do is you're going to take your filter socket, get it placed onto the filter itself, and here comes the ratchet with that extension arm. Trying to do this without the extension arm, uh, it's perhaps possible, but uh, it's really helpful to have that extension to get just the right angle and get in there and get it loosened up. But uh, yeah, once you've gotten it taken off, there again, look, you've got the pan directly underneath where the filter's gonna be coming off to make sure you're catching drips. It's already starting there as soon as you kinda open it up. There again, this thing's gonna be hot, so um, having a rag on hand is helpful. Twist that off, and it can be a little tricky getting it past the linkage there, uh, but as best you can, just get it out of there without spilling a whole bunch of oil over the place. Bam. Alright, at this point you're done draining the oil, 
and you're ready to start putting things back together. I have here the black oil filter uh, that I picked up from the dealership. They do come in two different varieties. Typically you'll see the black and the chrome. Uh, I used to spring for the chrome ones, but you know the night train engine I've got on the Fat Bob here is fully blacked out anyway. Uh, and the chrome does cost a little bit more. So uh, I've got that black version there. Before you get it back on, you're going to want to go ahead and lube up that seal there. So you just kind of get a little oil on your finger and lube up that seal so that it makes a, a good solid connection. And uh, at this point in time, you're also done with that filter socket. Uh, in the maintenance manual, it, it'll, it'll say, you know, you're really not supposed to use uh, any type of tool to get this thing back on. You certainly don't want to over tighten it and cause uh, damage to that connection there. So uh, you're going to get it on just a uh, hand tighten. Um, I'm over here just kind of changing position, uh, making sure I'm getting a good feel for the filter. When you start twisting it, if you got oil on your fingers like I do, at this point it's a little misleading to think that it's completely tightened. So hand tightened only, uh, there you go. Next to getting the plug put back in. So I noticed uh, looking at this thing that it had just some kind of engine grime and some funk up in the threads there and you know you got it off you might as well take a minute to, to clean it up a bit so I just got a brush and kind of cleaning off the threads we're gonna also want to go ahead and replace that o-ring this is kind of an optional step not everyone does it even in the manual it mentions uh, to inspect and check it for wear uh, but for the purposes of the video and just because it's kind of how I roll I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna replace it anyway uh, so getting this plug nice and cleaned up making sure that getting all that stuff out of the threads there and you can see it comes back shiny and uh, new looking ready to go back in and then I've got the o-ring replacement that goes on and we're ready to roll so back to the drain plug location now there is a torque spec in the service manual it reads 14 to 21 pounds um, I don't have a torque wrench to get up into this location here so just making sure that it's secured without over tightening it going by feel You've got your filter back on, you have your plug back in. Now it's a matter of getting the oil back into the bike. All right, so in the beginning of the video, I said that you need three quarts of oil, but the white capacity of the Fat Bob is actually two and a half quarts. When I get past the two, when I get into pouring the half, I get cautious just because you know you certainly don't want to overfill it, have to you know get oil out or um, run it with too much oil and you know blow out the oil pressure there. So um, I'll fill it to about the 600 milliliter mark. There are markings on the side of the bottle. I'd be kind of conservative with that. Uh, underfill it and then check just to see where we're at. having a little problem getting the camera to fully focus at this point in time but it looks to be full you can kind of see where the uh, the markings on the meter uh, just past my finger there it's uh, a bit more shiny than the dull part uh, there you go so 
it's full cold. And now to move on to starting the bike up, you want to get it heated back up, cycle the oil back through the engine, and then double check that level. Uh, once the oil has cycled through the engine, you've got it nice and heated up, it's filled your filter back up, you're going to have a different level. So ultimately you want to make sure to get that warm level check. Going back in to check that oil level, you have warmed up the bike, so if those pipes are hot, be careful there, taking a, taking a peek, and now you can see that it is just a little bit low. It's easier to read once the oil has ran back through the bike some. A little bit low there, so go back and top off to that warm full level. And that's it. Ride safe, like, subscribe. See you next time.